Once you know it, it's obvious. It's like, oh yeah, cool. This is one way I can use my consciousness, my attention. But before you know it, it's a big secret, you know? <laughs> You're seeking and seeking and seeking. But the mechanism is very simple once you know it. But you know, how many people know this, this specific secret in the world? It's a secret of secrets, even though it's so obvious. Consider for a couple more minutes just by seeing that all experience relies on being. Everything that you engage with, everything you think about, everything you feel, all your problems, all your delusions, all your games, all your, and I mean that both positively and negatively, and it includes all of it, and neutrally. All of it relies on being. Just acknowledge that for a minute. <laughs> Go through some of the things maybe that you wrote down and just see like, well, without being, this wouldn't even be there. Without me first being there, this wouldn't even exist or be a topic of contempt or a topic of desire. Without being, I wouldn't have beliefs. Without being, I wouldn't have sensations. Or at least I wouldn't know the sensations. Just acknowledge that, that everything relies, everything in your life, everything in your consciousness, everything in your mind, everything in your emotional body, everything in your history, everything in your future, everything in the present, depends on, relies on, is due to being. Bring it all kind of back to the root issue slash privilege of being. And you can see this in a positive or negative fashion, and both can be powerful. You can say, well, because of being, thanks to being, can I have this beautiful experience? Or you could say, due to being, I suffer. All suffering is because of being. But also all joy, at least joy, worldly joy, celebratory joy, Expressive joy, experiential joy, is due to being. So depending on how happy you are, I suppose, you can either be grateful for it or accuse, be grateful for being, or you can accuse being of being the main cause of all your issues and problems. Both have a powerful potency to them. So just keep acknowledging that for a bit. Is it obvious to you yet that this is the cause, the primary cause of any experience? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and it is quite easy to acknowledge, no? Stephen, do you have a question specific about this? Because I'll probably address whatever you yeah, have to ask. If still. It's about the middle, yeah, if it's about this segment, go ahead. So you said that if you uh, completely give up being, you'd probably have an exclusive pop out. But in that, in an exclusive pop out, you realize you still are. So I'm a little hung up on like, it seems like the being still. It, you like, first need to be before you can be hung up. Right, right. But what? So if when you in an exclusive pop out, you still are. Yeah, but you don't have that issue when you're. I know. I'm just the words there are. Yeah, but who cares? Okay. Is what I'm saying. All right, sweet. Fuck just it. all you have to acknowledge now is that all your problems, all your speculations, all your confusions depend on being. Yeah. So, so bring I it back that. to the root. 
instead of being in one of the fruits, instead of being at the root, being in the fruits and then asking questions about what's beyond the root, when it's not relevant when you are beyond the root, nor does it help you inside of the tree and the fruit and the world. So for now, just, right, so just don't worry about it. Yeah, correct. Sweet. Or worry about it, but then see that you have to be there first before you can worry about it. Yeah, that's clear. Nice. Yeah. So just the point, the primary and only cause to anything to be that wordless, obvious, difficult to describe, but obviously here, mystery of being. Without that, nothing else would be. Nothing else would be known. Nothing would be experienced. Right? So this is clear? Is this obvious? Any confusion about this part, that being is the main cause, the only cause for anything else, is the primary underlying cause. Clear? Cool. So after acknowledging that for a bit, and you see it doesn't require too much concentration, right? A little bit, but not too much. You can kind of apply this somewhat casually when you're just contemplating, having a cigar, even while you're maybe dialoguing with someone, just have a few seconds of acknowledgement like, hey, I wouldn't be having this dialogue if it wouldn't be for being first. It's happening inside and due to being. So quite casually, you can acknowledge this and that will already increase your sense of um, awareness of presence or your awareness of being. And it gives you access to the next phase or stage which is the theme or topic of today. Now you can use, and here your concentration needs to be a little bit more subtle and maintained for it to really be effective. But once you acknowledge that being is the root of all experience, is the cause of all experience, is the container, the threshold, the basis of all experience. Now, if you can maintain an awareness of the beingness, or the I am, you could say, the wordless I am, while the experiences are happening inside of it, you can now use the beingness as a wall between yourself, a shield between yourself and the world or shield of freedom. <clears throat> if you can maintain to some degree, just play around with it, you'll get better and better at it. If you can maintain a sense of that beingness as being the root of whatever you are experiencing right now, then you will start to notice a subtle but profound <coughs> sense of a, sort of a, a shift in the domain that you occupy. Like either you're inside of experience land or you're kind of outside of experience land. And by maintaining an awareness of the beingness, which is experiencing whatever you're experiencing. In other words, you're not experiencing it. It's the beingness due to which it's being experienced. Maintaining that awareness, even at some level of concentration, acts as a wall between you and your experiences. And I mean this in a positive sense. It may sound a little closed off, but that's not how I mean it. But it's like a shield, like Captain America's shield. It just deflects every experience. And in a holistic way, naturally, unless you start to sort of intellectualize it and then turn it into an identity and take your personality with you all the way into the absolute. But if you don't do that, if you just let it be as it is, then it's shielding you from all experiences in a holistic fashion. So if you, if you are the moment, every second that you are aware of beingness as the cause experiencer of all experiences, you are free to the degree that your concentration allows you to see this clearly, but even a little bit will allow you to experience a little bit more of absolute freedom, which is a lot. A little bit, a little glimpse of absolute freedom is quite a bit. It's more than a little bit. So it's, it's a very good investment. Return on <laughs> concentration is high. 
how much freedom you get in exchange for a little bit of concentration when you activate this absolute freedom sense is a great return on investment. So even just a little bit will go a long way. All you have to do is allow your current experience to be as it is. You stop engaging in the snow globe of experience land, just for a second, and instead you acknowledge the snow globe itself, the glass, the wordless yet obvious beingness, which is the cause. You're seeing it, actively seeing it. That's why it takes a little bit of concentration, because you need to, it's only it's only effective for as long as you have that awareness active, right? But again, even a little bit can go a long way and it can have a lingering effect. But if you really want that, that recognition of freedom, you have to activate this seeing in your awareness, in your vibration, you could say. So every second that you actively see that the beingness is actually the cause, the root, the basis, the container, the requirement for whatever other experience might be happening. The moment you have that awareness of the beingness, the beingness is in front of you instead of behind you. It becomes an object instead of the subject. And therefore it now acts as a shield <coughs> between you and whatever is happening inside the snow globe. If you, if you put your eye like on the snow globe, you're gonna, it's gonna feel like you're experiencing, you know, all the intricate things that happen inside the snow globe. And they're gonna feel like, you're gonna feel like you are the snow globe, that's the subject. But if you're aware of the snow globe, now that distance, that awareness of being as the cause, as the cause of the experiences, your awareness of the snow globe as the container for all experiences, that distance acts as sort of a wall or shield or discernment, which also is the ultimate form of knowledge, capital K. As long as you maintain an awareness of the snow globe, you're not affected by whatever's happening inside the snow globe. So this is ultimate freedom. <clears throat> so an awareness of beingness, seeing the beingness, not as yourself, but as a basis, as something due to which everything happens, creates that space of recognition between the beingness and all the suffering and enjoyment and striving inside of that, between that and something else, you, something indescribable, formless, more formless than formless being. So what if you toss your attachment to being in the fire? <coughs> what if you gave up your attachment to being? And don't think about what that means. Just consider it directly. And see what kind of opens up to you. And it doesn't have to go anywhere. It's just that you just consider it as it is. Just consider suddenly having no attachment left to being. Liberating. 
then what can happen to you? Stop existing. Well, that's a conclusion. I get what you're saying. But that's not a concept that the mind will eagerly relate to. And, and it's not entirely true. Because you still exist even without existing. Like you cannot not exist. But beingness, l let's put it this way also. Um, do you think that the one infinite creator gives a fuck about being? <laughs> Does the one infinite absolute create creator reality, would it have to concern itself with being or not being? Or <laughs> would it care? So then as soon as you stop caring, you get the sense that you are that creator. And with it, then all attachments go out the window, if even just for those few seconds. But again, a little bit, a little bit of exposure to absolute freedom goes a long way. And you can't find that inside of being. You have to become aware of the root first. That's why I always say, I've tried to minimize it, but I come back over and over again to it being a two-step process. I've not been able to condense it down to a one-step process. Not effectively, anyway. First, you need to be aware of being, and then you can gain the awareness of beyond being. But from inside the snow globe, being engaged in your thoughts and your attachments and your ideas about the absolute or this or that, not first being aware of the cause of all that, the root of all that, where all of that meets, the meeting point, the observer itself, the consciousness itself, the recognizer itself, the I am itself, the witness itself, the being itself, the wordless being is so obviously here, otherwise you wouldn't hear my voice. That being, which you cannot deny, that being. First, an awareness of that as something other than you, as a substratum, as a thing. Formless, but still something. It's still a quality. It still has the quality of being. And it produces all other qualities and forms inside of itself, like imagination does. So you could also roughly say that the I am equals imagination itself. Imagination as the active principle, the generator of what we call reality, typically. But is it, it is itself the reality of being or the illusion of being, depending on how you want to flip that. So to be aware of the substratum, the root, the cause, the primary cause. First, and then to see that it's not you, to allow for that knowledge to dawn, that everything happens because of beingness, but you can't be aware of beingness. Now, beingness is the wall between you and everything else. As long as you maintain an awareness of that beingness as a wall, as an object that's not you, inside of which everything happens, but everything happens to the beingness. But if you're aware of the beingness, it's not happening to you. It's happening to beingness. If you can maintain that awareness, and again, a few seconds goes a long way. And then you just practice. Then you open the back door to absolute freedom. And this little breeze starts to come through. And you don't, you may not have the words for it. It doesn't matter. You don't need any words for it, but you'll just know it. And if you were to maintain this long enough with great enough intensity, it's like, you actually back out of that back door until you're outside of the house altogether. Which is what you could call a transcendental experience. But the starting point is just this intuitive recognition that dawns when you maintain an awareness of being as not you, as something in addition to you. 
as something you are aware of inside of which everything happens, everything. So that means that nothing touches you in that moment. That's why beingness, I amness, can be used as a shield between you and literally everything that could ever possibly happen to not you, a.k.a. I am. So right now, as I speak, don't focus on what I'm saying. Focus on the fact that it's happening to beingness. That's it. You allow my speech to be as it is. You don't engage with it. All you're aware of is the being that's making it possible for the ears to have this sound perception. And that, in that subtle moment of awareness of the beingness being responsible for the sound, you will begin to see that it's not reaching you, that nothing inside of the bubble of consciousness is actually reaching you. It's only touching the beingness. It's because of the beingness. But if you're aware of the beingness, and then loosen your attachment to being. Loosen your identification with being. Soften it. And you will find that all your attachments soften with it. You can only be as identified with something specific as you are first identified with being. If you are 90% identified with being, you can be 90% identified with your fear for trains or sharks or tornadoes or relationships. But if you are 10% identified with being, you can only be 10% identified with these individuated fears. So if you soften your attachment to being, you simultaneously soften your attachment, your delusion, your identification with all the other fears that happen inside of beingness. Because beingness is the fuel for all of them. So if you can soften your attachment, your need, your need to be, your need to assert yourself as I am. If you can just soften that, just let that go, immediately everything else softens too. Now, even though I make it out to be quite casual, I understand it's very subtle knowledge. So if you have any questions or confusions about this, please let me know. <laughs> there are certain mantras you could use to evoke this sense when you kind of maybe when you're not in this space maybe you don't feel you have the access so much of course you could just watch a video like this again and kind of let yourself be guided back into it but if it's kind of in the moment you can use something like and you may have to repeat it a few times before it starts to activate in your awareness as a direct perceptual shift but you can keep saying something like everything that happens happens to and because of I am. Or you could say consciousness, or you could say awareness, or you could say beingness, or you could say even God, if you will. If you keep repeating that, everything that happens happens to and because of being. Everything that happens happens inside of and because of being. Everything that happens happens to and because of consciousness. That it, this brings your awareness back to the consciousness to whom everything pertains, to which everything applies, to which everything happens, to which, inside of which, due to which, thanks to which, everything occurs or appears. And just having that awareness, you don't have to understand it, but just having that awareness that everything happens to beingness and then being aware of the beingness to which everything happens, just cultivating that awareness will intuitively reveal that somehow 
you are free of it all. And you don't try to go, you don't try to reach for that freedom because it, then it gets intellectual. You just do the exercise. You just allow everything to happen inside of the I am, to the I am, and then you become aware of the I am, to which, due to which, inside of which everything occurs. And just maintaining that awareness, again, allows you to use the beingness. As long as you're aware of the beingness, it functions as a buffer between you and the world. And in that buffer, in that distance, in that space, in that distinction, in that knowledge, in that discernment, in that wisdom, you are not only like temporarily protected from the chaos that beingness produces, but you are deepening your intuitive awareness of your absolute freedom. You are starting to open that gateway to the absolute which is exciting, no? It's not the kind of stuff you, you learn at school yet. Hey, you want to open your gateway to eighth density, <laughs> bitch? <laughs> you want to skip a few levels? You want to skip a few billion years of evolution? Here's how. <laughs> Fun, huh? Just do this. It's a little bit subtle, but everyone can get it. <laughs> Just do this a little bit more, and you're good. <laughs> and I mean, it's simple, and it's obvious, and it's useful, usable. But it's from, and I, for me, I don't feel this anymore, but because it's just so obvious. But from a conventional world point of view, this is like the secret of secrets. This is like the stuff you have to dig for and dig for and dig for. Like, it, but it's so obvious, it's so easy, so simple. It's right here. But you do have to know the secret. You do have to know the mechanism. But this is the secret of secrets. So I think that's pretty exciting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once you know it, it's obvious. It's like, oh yeah, cool. This is one way I can use my consciousness, my attention. But before you know it, it's a big secret, you know? <laughs> You're seeking and seeking and seeking. But the mechanism is very simple, once you know it. But you know, how many people know this, this specific secret in the world? It's a secret of secrets. You know, it's so obvious. And then comes conviction. Sorry? And then comes conviction, once you know it. Like, then it's like a process of conviction. Yep, then comes conviction. Sorry, then comes conviction, yes. In a way, you could say faith and conviction are the same thing, but faith, faith is conviction before the realization. Conviction is faith after the realization. First, you got to have faith in it, and then you'll be convinced of it. You have conviction in it. But it's essentially plugging into the same energy, but one is prior to and the other is post or during, so to speak. But yes, allowing this back door to open through this key mechanism, using your attention in this very specific, kind of simple, but kind of subtle way using it in that way, applying it in that way, will give conviction. That's what I mean when I say even a little bit will go a long way. It's like you might have just sort of a sense of it, a glimpse of it for a few seconds, but that will already deepen your conviction, which will already alter your way of relating to experiences, 
probably for the rest of your life, which is what conviction does. <laughs>